Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I'm back with what's probably my last installment I'm talking about Cyrano, the sound design and music that I've written for the play Cyrano. Uh, I, I really wish that I'd had more time to play with my Osmos, but I've been working on this play. I've collected all of my sound effects and music, and now it's time to start putting everything into QLab. QLab, the sort of timeline and editing um, software that we use in the theater to play back and control cues, microphones, it even handles video. It's a really powerful piece of software, and there's a version of it for us that's free. I think it's useful for almost anybody involved in music and sound. Let's look quickly at it. Well, we've been talking about the music and sound that I've put together for Cyrano. And uh, now it's time to go into the theater. In fact, last weekend, we were there three days in a row, eight-hour days, looking at each scene, saying, well, we'd like a piece of music here. We want to hear the horse come in there. There's a big explosion there. I'm in a theater, and um, I should show you my plot, but I don't think I have a copy of it digitally. I just, uh, But I'm in a theater right now that's more or less in the round. And we have a full Meyer sound system that includes what I guess you might think of as front of house array, which in, which gives me a stereo center speakers and um, you know a subwoofer, and then uh, from the, from their P series four corner speakers, not the small ones, but the bigger ones. They sound kind of amazing uh, for a small space, and this is you know like a I think it's not much more than two hundred seat theater here in the East Bay, um, this is a, a very powerful system. I'm running it on a Mac computer uh, using um, a simple 8-channel uh, out audio interface. I think it's more than that, but I'm only using 8 channels. Maybe I'm only using 7. And um, it, each output channel goes to an individual speaker. So I have individual control over how the sound moves in the space, how it's balanced, how loud the sub is. Let's take a look at QLab and how it manages all that. Now, because I have this set up here as stereo, we won't see kind of everything, but we'll try to talk about it as we go. So here's a blank QLab space. There are no cues in it right now. I've got a list of possible you know, tools, I could create groups, audio cues, mic cues, video, etc. And down below, since no cue is selected, there's nothing in the inspector. We'll see something in a second. Let's bring in a church bell. It's a pleasant sound. The audio file is now ready to play. And if I hit the space bar, it would play. I've got levels down here. And you can see that the master output is set to zero. And then the left and right channels, these two faders, are also set to zero. Just between you and me, I think they should be set lower. Here you can see the cue running. I can live update this, figuring out exactly how loud I want it to be. And I can see it as it plays. The waveform display displays a, a cur color, you know, a line that's flowing through. I could also, if I wished, toggle on an integrated envelope so that I could sort of build a, a fade in or fade out. All this makes plenty of sense, right? Perfectly reasonable. Um, we could even do something silly. Make it get quieter for some reason and then come back. I think this might be useful in live performance for an awful lot of people. I can also set a loop for it as well. An infinite loop or any number of play counts, and it'll just keep going. Let's say uh, we want it to end there and just loop. It will go back on itself. And this can be terrifically useful for uh, playback of almost anything, right? The whole thing starts again. Now that won't stop until I tell it to, and there are a number of ways to make it stop. But here's the one that we use the most. Take a fade, drag it in, set a destination for it. This fade is gonna control the church bell. It's gonna bring everything down to zero. And when it's finished doing that, 
after five seconds, see this number here? It's gonna stop it, here we go. Okay, so this is kind of like everything that I've done that I think I might need in the theater. In fact, it's changed a bit since I did this version of it, but this version's useful for us and we can take a look at it. I number my cues um, just sequentially, but there's a bunch of things that happen before the show actually begins. For instance, I really need to hear if every speaker is working. So I set up a test for every one of my speakers. And what I like to do, and not everyone you know, does this, is I use a sound that kind of goes a number, which tells me which speaker it is, and then a sweep that starts low and goes up and then go down. So it, this is going to be a little bit intense sounding. It's a sweep. One. Two. I do the same things with the subs and each of the satellite speakers. And the device and levels I'll tab down here allows me to program exactly which speaker I want it to go to. I want this to go to output three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cross points and volumes allow me to set multi-channel um, sort of balances. Right now, this is a mono file, so there's only one cross point down here. Well, here's a classic example of an opening cue. Um, it opens with a little bit of music, the cold open music, and then crossfades to some street scenes. Uh, listen to just this marketplace sound just by itself. Really quiet. A little bit of music in the background. So that's the piece of music. Here's the ambience, and you can see here there's kind of this is something just recorded in Paris. There's some bells, some people talking. Right here, that sound began, and three seconds later it proceeded to add the music. The whole thing sounds like this. Again, we've got some auto follows over here. 25 seconds after I hit Q1, it'll follow down to the ambient. So here we go. Piece of music. It's going to be quite loud in the mains. And you can see the clock is running. I'm going to know exactly when to change the lights and talk to the lighting designer. The stage manager is on their stopwatch. And uh, then the lights come up on stage, the music fades out, and we get the, kind of like making a movie, we get the sound of the bells in the scene and so on. And that's going to sit there for quite a while. The next thing that happens in Q4 is I want to replace the music that existed kind of in the background and put in a new important piece of music for a piece of business around our two lovers. So I hit that cue, it fades the background music and brings the kind of the good louder music to the front and just allows it to play. Each of the cues that I program are like that, and some of them are very involved. In the third act, there's a big battle scene. Let's see if we can get to some of that and listen to how it works. It's going to be quite loud. This set of cues from 60 down to probably 69 will give us a whole bunch of things, including specific uh, explosions, underscoring walla, some musket fusillades, et cetera, et cetera. Sourcing all this can be difficult, and then programming it, and you go on and so forth. Here you have a basic underscore and then some specific events. Also, the birds shut up, so it's a fade and stop on the birds. Add a second layer and a big musket fuselage. Surrender no and lay down your arms. Those are just vocal calls. They're going to happen from off stage. I've actually replaced those, so I won't play them for you now. And then even more. Now, at the end of the act, things get quite big. First, the Pfeiffer plays on stage. And the battle gets big. And then I want to go to a scene change, put it up into the names. And at this point, the battle sort of eases itself away. And this is more of an orchestral version of the same thing that we just heard with the snare drums. 
time passes, a dozen years, and so we go to a quieter, more serene church vibe. When I hit that cue, it fades out the original piece of music, brings in the bells, we have the organ. They have to move a lot of stuff around on stage. This cue wound up being a minute long. And now we can kind of just go to the stage, fade everything out, add a little bit of bird. So beautiful. QLab is really fun to program in, and it's been a lot of years that I've used it. Over the course of the time I've been a sound designer, um, I began designing sound for theater when I was in my 20s, so it's, you know, it's almost 50, almost 50 years now that I've been doing sound design for theater uh, professionally in my 20s. I guess we should probably say more like 45. But the... Um, uh, we went from like reel to reel tape to you know these those funny little mini disc players and finally using a tool like this where you can really make a movie uh, QLab can manage microphone inputs and do the same kinds of things it can use audio unit effects on you know uh, audio files or on inputs it can also manage video and trigger and send MIDI to external devices. A very powerful tool. The free version of it is a two-channel, and there's a few things you can't do with it, but two-channel is often good enough for live performing, and you can get a license for a short amount of time. Uh, it's really an interesting program, and, and uh, you know, when you're performing live, sometimes it's just the thing you need. You just want to trigger some stuff. They have some other tools as well, including things that are kind of like old-fashioned radio carts where you just can trigger something from your phone. It'll just be a one-shot like a sample player. Well, I hope this has been useful. Um, if you're in the Bay Area, come see our version of Cyrano. If you're not, go see Cyrano somewhere else. It's one of the great plays of sort of the Western canon. Um, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.